Let's talk a little bit more about field intensity. Uh, remember that the field intensity can be obtained by taking the negative derivative of the potential and we took the derivative with respect to the radial direction. Now if we compare the fields that we've looked at so far, gravitational field and the uh, magnetic dipole field, if we were to look at a you know very long dipole, um, we were very close to the end of the dipole, we could think about that field as a monopole and we could take its uh, potential. It would just be the derivative of the a potential relative to the pole, that would be the negative derivative of the pole strength over the distance from your point of observation to the uh, pole, and that would give us P over R squared. That's a, just a familiar looking uh, inverse R squared uh, relationship. For the dipole, when we take the derivative of the potential, the potential it has a it has a completely different form than the potential for the monopole. We've got the uh, magnetic dipole moment times the cosine of theta. This is the co-latitude, the angle that your line of observation makes with the axis of the dipole uh, divided by r squared. And we're taking the negative derivative of that. And that gives us, when we take the negative derivative of this, we get a field strength, a uh, field intensity that varies as the cube of the distance to the center of the dipole. So we could simplify that to PL cosine of theta is two times the dipole moment times the cosine of uh, cosine of theta. So um, so these are field intensities, monopole and uh, dipole as a comparison and remember these are in the radial direction. So we can also think of the field of a dipole or the field of the Earth's magnetic field if we're thinking of it as a simple dipole. Here we are on the surface of a sphere and the total field intensity is pointing down towards the the north pole of the dipole in this case. So we um, know that we can resolve this into a horizontal component and a vertical component uh, given the inclination here. And we know that uh, <clears throat> this uh, uh, field intensity is, is pointing towards the uh, uh, dipole there, but Z sub e then is pointing down towards the center of the dipole and H sub e is tangential to the surface. So you might ask yourself, what is the vertical field intensity? So we we have the we have the uh, uh, magnetic field intensity, and so we know that that z sub b we've already we've already calculated this uh, basically in in the preceding uh, slide. You can see that we just took the derivative of the potential with respect to r, and we get uh, two pl or two times the dipole moment times the cosine of theta, this angle, over r cubed. <clears throat> and that's basi basically the radial component. That's the vertical field intensity. So the question would be, what is the horizontal field intensity? We haven't done that yet. So uh, when we're taking the derivative with respect to r, we're getting the radial component, which would be in terms of the Earth's um, magnetic field. That would be the... Um, vertical component uh, of the Earth's uh, magnetic field. So for the horizontal field we're evaluating a differential element as out along the surface of the Earth or tangential uh, to to a point, a uh, point of observation. And this ds then we're differentiating with respect to this little differential element here. Our, our differential step, and we're evaluating the change in the uh, uh, total field intensity in the horizontal direction. We're dealing with ds and using an arc length relationship. We can see that that differential step ds is equal to r, the radius of um, the uh, Earth, uh, we'll, we'll take it as the radius of, Earth, of the Earth in this case, uh, times the angle subtended by the step, uh, d theta. So 
the operator d ds taking the derivative with respect to s is d over r d theta and this will be the derivative along the surface or in the tangential direction and uh, h sub e is represented by the negative derivative of the potential along the Earth's surface in the s direction. So remember now we're calculating the field intensity we need to calculate the negative derivative from the potential. So here we are uh, at the surface. We know what the potential is. We've calculated the potential. We want to evaluate the derivative with respect to a differential step out along the surface where ds is equal to r d theta. So we have that the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field intensity or the dipole field, arbitrary dipole would be dv ds minus dv ds would be equal to minus 1 over r dv d theta. And then evaluating that, we see that the horizontal uh, magnetic field intensity in the horizontal direction would be, kind of going through the steps, would be equal to the dipole moment times the sine of theta. We're differentiating with respect to theta. We have the factor 1 over r in there, so we end up with the dipole moment times the sine of theta over r cubed. And just for comparison then for the vertical component, we have 2 times the dipole moment times the cosine of theta. But both components, the um, horizontal field intensity and the vertical field intensity, vary as 1 over r cubed. So let's take a look at these two components of the Earth's main magnetic field, the horizontal and the vertical component. And we'll take a look at that at the equator where theta, the co-latitude, is equal to 90 degrees. <coughs> so we have the horizontal component, uh, again, is equal to the dipole moment times the sine of theta over r cubed. And uh, so theta in this case is equal to 90 degrees. So we know that the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So um, what do you think? we're going to have here. When the sine of theta is equal to 1, h sub e will just be equal to m over r cubed. At the equator, the vertical component, cosine of 90 degrees is equal to 0, so that's going to be equal to 0. And, again, this is what we get when we take this derivative and evaluate it at 90 degrees, where sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. This is just m over r cubed. Now if we go to the poles and do the same thing, uh, the horizontal component then becomes 0 because the sine of uh, 0 is equal to 0. So the horizontal component uh, disappears. At the poles, the magnetic field, the magnetic field of the Earth is vertical. There is no horizontal component. At the equator, the Earth's main magnetic field is all horizontal. There is no vertical component. So we get these two relationships here. At the pole, the magnetic field is 2m over r cubed, and h sub e is equal to 0. At the poles, z sub e, 2m, 2 times the dipole moment over r cubed, h sub e is 0. There is no horizontal component. At the equator, z sub e is equal to 0. h sub e is equal to m over r cubed. It's all horizontal at the equator. So, <clears throat> z at the pole is equal to 2 times m over r cubed, which is equal to 2 times the magnetic field intensity at the equator. Uh, we saw this before when we were working with terrain conductivity. If we wanted to, um, if we had our um, coils on the terrain conductivity meter oriented coplanar horizontal, uh, then the dipole field, the induced dipole field, was oriented vertically downward and we were getting increased penetration and that penetration was twice the penetration that we would get if we had the coils oriented vertically and we were using or making a horizontal uh, dipole field measurement. So, um, so hopefully this kind of ties back into something we talked about earlier on and we didn't go through the derivation of the uh, field intensities. I, th you know, I think at this point it's appropriate to do that. Uh, kind of going back to basics, working with the potential field, showing how we can get the, uh, uh, <clears throat> take the, uh, calculate the horizontal and uh, uh, 
uh, vertical uh, magnetic field intensities uh, from the potential. So um, hopefully that you know filled in uh, uh, some blanks maybe in some earlier discussions and also gave you uh, a little bit better feel for the components of the main magnetic uh, field intensity F sub e. We've broken it down into its uh, vertical and horizontal components. And the next time we're going to talk about field gradients. So we're going to be calculating derivatives. We're going to be taking derivatives once again. These could be in the radial direction, in the horizontal direction. But the idea would be to see, as we did with um, gravity, to see how these different field components vary vertically or, or horizontally. So we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for joining us.